House Bill 1064, House Amenity Rentals, Sales and Use Tax Imposed and Local Tax Authorized. Favor report is amended, adopted. Yeah. The chair of the committee special ordered this. <laughs> My apologies, Madam Speaker. That's okay. I was wondering why he was getting up. I, 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 <laughs> I believe uh, my friend has a, an amendment at the desk. Okay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. All right. The chairman, I mean, the chairman, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the gentleman from Calvert. <laughs> Can we re redact that last sentence? <laughs> <laughs> Gentleman from Coward. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. You know, we did go to the same high school, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Gentleman had. Go ahead. So I do have an amendment at the desk. It's amendment number 1064 slash 873620 slash 1. Amendment number 1. Move so much be considered the reading of the amendment, Madam Speaker. So ordered. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So, folks, uh, we have in front of us a bill, um, and the bill is House Bill 1064, Home Amenity Rentals Sales and Use Tax Imposed on Those Home Amenity, amenity Rentals. And um, we did hear some, some discussion, I believe it was yesterday, and I just wanted to make sure that I fully understood the bill, because it is a pretty sweeping bill. So I, I had a couple of questions for the floor leader, if I may. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Floor leader. Good morning. Um, so it appears this bill is doing two things. It appears the first thing the bill is doing is to, is to impose the 6% sales tax on individuals at their homes who may have a pool in the backyard, as an example, and then choose to rent that pool to a family who wants to, let's say, use it for the day or for a few hours. Is that, is that correct? No. This rental needs, it needs to be facilitated through a home amenity rental intermediary, which is defined as a platform, an internet-based digital entity that advertises the availability of home amenities and receives compensation for facilitating these reservations? Yes. So the answer to what I just said, I believe, is yes, which is that for the first time in Maryland's history, we're saying that your property, your house where you live, that has an amenity, an amenity could be a pool, it could be a garage, it could be a barbecue area, it could be a barn, which is common in my county, by the way. Um, it could be uh, a tennis court, it could be uh, a bocce ball court, it could be all kinds of things. And to the extent that you have someone come on your property at your home where you live, and use any of those things, the bill states that there's a 6% sales tax that must be paid. Delegate, that, that is just not true. That's not what the bill says. So why is it then, since you're saying that, sir, that in the fiscal note it says on the state fiscal effect, general fund and special fund revenues increase by a potentially significant amount beginning in fiscal 2024. The amount of the revenue increase depends on the number of home amenity rentals that occur each year and the value of the home amenity rentals that are subject to the state sales and use tax, the value of the rentals, which cannot be reliably estimated as a point of reference, total sales and use tax revenues increased by $6,000 for each $100,000 of taxable home amenity rentals. So I think it's important to be transparent and clear that the fiscal note writer says 
that this is a tax of 6% when you rent your pool in your backyard or any of those other amenities, and the state's fiscal effect is its revenues will increase significantly to the extent that and to the value of all of those amenities that people rent in their, on their property. What's the question, Delegate? I'm just refuting the comment on the floor, and it's important that this is not a 6% sales tax increase on people's residences when they rent out amenities on their property, because it is exactly that. Pursuant to the undeniably and well-written fiscal note, I'm going to have to respectfully disagree there, Delegate. At some point in recent history, this legislature made the decision to tax short-term home rentals, right, through platforms like Airbnb. That industry has evolved. Now there are platforms, digital platforms, that allow you to rent sh amenities for short-term rentals. What this bill does, above all else, it's a technical bill, bringing into alignment short-term amenity rentals with short-term lodging rentals. Anything else that you're mentioning is outside the scope of this bill. So not according to the comptroller. So the comptroller states that if you actually rent without a platform, your pool, in a private transaction between someone, let's say, a few miles away that doesn't have a pool, that the nexus is that you now are responsible for paying that 6% sales tax to the comptroller, and if, to the extent that you do it frequently in private transactions, you're going to be responsible for getting a sales and use, use tax certificate so that you can run this business at your house and pay the sales tax. The second thing, and this is my second question for you, or my next question, the second thing the bill does is it authorizes the local governments specifies which local governments in particular, because I guess some local governments are already doing this, hard to believe, but specifies certain local governments that can put an additional tax on top of the 6% tax for the home amenities that you're renting at your house. Is that correct? So I, I will just reiterate here, right? If you look at page two and three of the bill, it, it defines what is a home rental, inter, a home amenity rental intermediary, right? This is limited to rentals conducted through those home rental, home amenity rental intermediaries. Uh, as for counties, no counties are, this is an authorizing piece of legislation, right? It has that state, that state sales and use tax component, but it also authorizes counties that wish uh, to impose this tax to do so. It is not requiring any county uh, to impose any additional tax. So the bill then, per, your just admit, per what you just admitted, actually does increase the 6% sales tax and apply it to home amenities from the state of Maryland, and that is so. And, but what it also does is it says to the local governments, including mine in Calvert County, if you so choose, in addition to the state mandating the 6% sales tax on your home amenity, if you so choose as a local government, you can actually add a tax on top of the tax when you rent your pool. Does that sound about right? We, we often hear about simple and straightforward bills. This is a simple and straightforward bill to align short-term amenity rentals with short-term lodging rentals when it comes to taxes and regulations. Thank you, Floor Leader. Yes, you were correct. It is indeed. I appreciate it, and I'm going to speak to the amendment now. I appreciate your comments. Uh, Madam Speaker. We are indeed aligning, um, which is a nice word of saying, increasing taxes. Um, so here's the amendment. I have the floor. To, the, to my good friend from Baltimore County, oh, I would like to actually well, thank read you. my I asked now. the speaker for permission to talk, not you, but thank you very much. Okay. Well, you can always tell when we hit a nerve. Um, I did so to the members of the House, here's what the amendment does. The amendment simply says that home amenities, they do not include swimming pools, hot tubs, saunas, pickleball courts, tennis courts, bocce ball courts, basketball courts, barbecue areas, picnic areas, sports fields, or equestrian arenas, fields, barns, or stalls, or any other portion of a residential property. Residential property. Your house, in other words. Located in Allegheny County, Baltimore County, Calvert County, 
Carroll County, Cecil County, Harford County, St. Mary's County, or Washington County. In other words, this is a principled amendment saying that after you've already paid your tax to the state, your income tax, which you have to file with the comptroller every year, if you are self-employed, you pay a business personal property tax and then you pay your corporate income tax, or if you're an LLC, you pay that tax. But then there's the property tax. You know, you've saved all of your life, you bought a house, you have a mortgage, and one day your dream is to pay the house off so that you don't have that mortgage, that burden. But what you still have is the property tax, the state, the state portion of the property tax and the county portion of the property tax. And in my mind, that property tax is a contract with you, the homeowner, that hopefully in retirement it won't go up and you won't have to pay any other taxes, you paid off your house, there's nothing else that you owe anybody. As long as you pay that property tax, the state property tax and the county property tax. I think that's the contract that most people in Maryland think that they're entering into when they finally pay off their mortgage. But not now. Not with House Bill 1064. House Bill 1064 says that if you have an amenity at your house, if you were lucky enough to work your entire life to pay off that mortgage and you have some amenities like a pool, if you're lucky enough to have a pool or fortunate enough, I should say, or you have just a really cool barbecue area, or you have a really neat court that's for bocce ball or pickleball or something like that, or a picnic area, and you enter into an agreement with someone to rent it for a few hours, now you've got to pay the state sales tax on that. And that's in addition to if you happen to have an Airbnb and you're renting a room, which is already current law, if you rent a room in your house, you've now got to pay a 6% tax on that. But in addition, now they want to impose this on these other amenities, which are not rooms, they're not lodging. That's what this bill does. And the other thing the bill does is it says you also have to you also may have to pay the local government a tax as well on top of that 6% sales tax. But as the floor leader said, the local government part is only authorizing. It's only authorizing. But the state part isn't authorizing, it's mandatory from now on when the bill passes, if it passes. Yeah, all those amenities, you're gonna be paying a tax. And so this amendment is pretty straightforward. It says that home amenity does not include swimming pools, hot tubs, saunas, pickleball courts, tennis courts, bocce ball courts, basketball courts, barbecue areas, picnic areas, sports fields, or equestrian areas, fields, barns, or stalls, or any other portion of a residential property located in the counties, Allegheny, Baltimore, Calvert, Carroll, Cecil, Harford, St. Mary's, and Washington. It's a principled amendment, I think, that when you work your entire life to pay off your property, and when you're working every day to pay for the property and to pay the property taxes at the county level and the state level, and with all the inflation that's going on, increasingly people are trying to find ways of making extra money by renting these amenities on their property. And no sooner does that happen than a state that has endless appetite for more of your money. It's always other people's money that they spend. Finds a new way to make it harder for you to live here. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Floor leader. First, let me, let me just again clarify, we had this conversation yesterday. This tax is on the consumers, not on the property owners, the renters of these home amenities. Uh, as for the amendment, right, a swimming pool in Howard County is no different than a swimming pool in Carroll County. A bocce ball court in, in Prince George's County is no different than a bocce ball court in Cecil County. Uh, this amendment just creates inconsistencies in statewide law and would add complexity. Uh, so as such, I urge the body to resist the amendment. Thank you. Madam Speaker. Gentleman from Anne Arundel. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, can the floor leader please rise for a couple questions? Floor leader. 
Yes, sir. Typically when we see bills come down here, it's because somebody either had a complaint or there was a problem. And when I look through the uh, testimony, I, I asked you about this yesterday, it seems like this is a Montgomery County issue um, that you're probably familiar with, hence why you brought the bill. Can you explain to me some of the problems you may have had in Montgomery County and who brought the complaint or is this just something you thought was a great idea? Delegate, this is not a Montgomery County bill. If you go right now to one of these platforms where you can rent some of these home amenities, you will see that they are located all over the state. Right? I've had conversations with colleagues who don't live in Montgomery County who are now thinking about renting out their backyard swimming pool. Right? So this is a statewide bill. It, it, is, it is an issue of, of, of statewide importance. Right? Uh, it is not specific to any one county. It's important for people to be able to use their private property in the way that they wish. What inspired you to, to decide to, ha to tax it? What problem are we solving by people offering out some of their own amenities to people that may not have the resources to have a pool? To ha I, I see in here music studios. There might be aspiring young musicians that don't want to pay the high growing cost to get their own music studio, but want to rent out somebody else's house. My question to you is what brought you to the point where you said this is a problem we need to fix by taxing it. Look, that, that's a great question, and that, that is the, what you just referenced, right, is the beauty of, of platforms like this, where you can go and rent out your neighbor's studio, yet where your neighbor's tennis court for tennis classes. The, the point of this bill is that business evolves, industry evolves, and the state needs to keep up with that evolution, with that progress. Right now, we are not keeping up with that progress because a few years ago, when the state decided to impose a tax on short-term lodging rentals, this industry did not really exist. The home-sharing marketplace did not really exist. That has evolved. Our state is now responsible for keeping up with that evolution. The, the reason that we, that we Im impose taxes on people is because we assume that there's some state value that we're offering to people. The reason we have a gas tax is for the State Highway Administration, so we can of all, or we can keep our streets and our highways, what value is the state bringing to a personal property that you've decided we should tax it? Or is it just because it's moving we should tax it? It's, it's an issue of fairness, right? It's bringing into alignment the short-term, the, the rental of short-term amenities in short-term lodging, this is a very simple and straightforward bill. We, the we, reason we, that we brought that was because the hotels felt like they were being shortchanged and they should be looked at the same. This has no other comparison. We're just taxing it because it's another way for individuals to, to, to gain some value from their own personal property. There, there are plenty of other comparisons. Um, so, so again, this, it is the same justification for why that bill was brought a few years ago. I will note, because you have, we're, we're discussing right now an amendment on counties, right, that the Maryland Association of Counties is supportive of this bill. They're, they're favorable with amendments. My point is, we are taxing individual personal property. Did you have anybody come in and say, please tax my property? Look, we, we Delegate, we are, I, I don't think we're going to find agreement on this issue here. I think we should vote on the amendment. I urge the body to resist the amendment, and then I hope we can move forward and vote on the bill. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I stand in, in, in favor of this amendment. The assault on the, on, the, on the taxpayers of this state is getting out of control, and when they're just simply trying to find a way to, to deal with this economy and inflation, for us to add another tax on something that's already taxed is inconceivable to me. With that, I move the amendment. On the amendment, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? No. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Madam Speaker. Yep. Explain my vote. If I may. How long are you going to take? 30 seconds? <laughs> Go ahead. 30 seconds. I guess if I get promoted to chairman, I might be shorter. Go ahead, you're wasting time. So, so in addition to the state tax and now the local authorized tax on your um, poll Excuse that me, you cannot explain your vote if you didn't vote on it. Okay, here we go. In addition to the state tax and the local tax that's on this, 
on uh, renting your pool and so forth. In addition to those things, you actually have to pay income tax on that revenue as well every year. Think about that. Tax at the state, tax at the local. You get your, your form of the income that you made from these things, and I got to pay taxes on that as well. Then you got the property tax at the local level and the state tax. Way to go, guys. Way to go. Any other ideas you have to raise taxes? Yeah, I'm uh, green on this amendment. amendment. We need to protect people. With all, of the, uh, with all the inflation going on and with the out-of-control prices, and this amendment does just that. Thank you. Madam Speaker. Yes, who has the next vote? Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Speaker, yeah. to explain my vote. Yeah, I'm disappointed that the Baltimore County delegation didn't get to consider this bill as it's a direct impact on the delegation. And so I'm, I'm urging Baltimore County uh, delegates to vote for this amendment. Let's bring this tax to the delegation and let us consider it individually. Thank you. Chairman of the county delegation to it, explain his vote. Exactly. I'm surprised to see my county's name in here. Uh, this is the first I've heard of it. First of all, will the floor leader rise on the amendment? Oh no, we're no, no, explaining no, votes. Explain we're explaining vote. votes. I'm, yeah. I'm go compelled to vote against this because it has not had proper consideration in my delegation. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Okay. Gentleman lady from Harford, explain her vote. Um, my vote's a little different. Um, I'm kind of concerned because it's setting a pattern and it could create unintended consequences such as increase in homeowners uh, uh, homeowners insurance, uh, umbrella insurances, liability insurances. Also, it, it really kind of commercializes neighborhoods. And I'm just not sure that that's really what we should be doing. In other words, if a neighbor wants to rent somebody's pool, um, we're, we're kind of like, what, why are we doing this? We're, 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 we're turning it into a, a commercial endeavor where people have to pay taxes. I mean, pretty soon everybody, we're going to be paying taxes on the air. So that's why I voted against it, unintended consequences, which we have no idea what they'll be. Thank you. Clerk will take the call. The amendment fails. Are there any additional amendments to the bill to its title? Hearing none, the bill is ordered. Pass printed for third reading. <laughs>